COVID and Guns, a video series brought to you by the Center for Firearms Law at Duke University School of Law. In this series, we talk to experts on various aspects of firearms law and policy about the role of guns in the ongoing pandemic. I'm Jake Charles, Executive Director of the Center, and today I'm joined by Phil Cook, the ITT Terry Sanford Distinguished Professor Emeritus of Public Policy Studies at Duke's Sanford School of Public Policy. And Phil is also a faculty affiliate of the Center. Thanks for joining us today, Phil. Yeah, thank you, Jake. Of course. Um, so first off, can you just tell us about your methodological perspective? How do you approach the study of firearms? Well, uh, first of all, I was trained by an economist and evolved into a criminologist and a public health researcher, but probably most fundamentally, I'm a policy guy, and I think a lot about policy evaluation uh, and to that effort, I bring um, a lot of training in statistics and, and uh, my research is, is largely empirical, although also conceptual. So um, I publish widely across a, a wide range of disciplines, including law journals and, and a variety of others. Right. Um, so there's been some reporting about an increase in gun sales that's driven, at least in part, by COVID. Do you have thoughts on what might be driving people to purchase guns right now? I do, I do. I actually uh, looked up the statistics. We don't have uh, direct counts of how many guns are being sold, um, but we do know how many background checks are being performed by licensed dealers and it's, it's highly correlated. Uh, and I think the first thing to say is that uh, during 2020, starting in January, uh, there was uh, a big increase in gun sales year over year. Uh, so in January, it was 25%, and, and in February, 36% above the previous year. In March, it was 41% um, above the previous year. And then it dropped back uh, to 25%. Um, the question is, uh, does COVID and the pandemic get the credit for this, if, if that's the right word? Uh, and I think the answer is uh, maybe partially, but mostly not. Um, the, the fact that we already were seeing such a large increase in January before most Americans recognized the pandemic as a real threat here in the United States suggests that something else was going on during that time. And for my money, what was going on was the democratic debates, the debates, uh, the presidential debates, where you had a lineup of all those candidates, uh, all of whom were espousing their support for additional gun control. Um, and I, th I think that for uh, folks who were concerned about uh, their ability to buy all the guns they wanted to of whatever sort, that was a, a worry and that they were uh, out buying additional guns. So I, I would say the, the first cause chronologically to the recent increase was not the pandemic, uh, but rather uh, the democratic debates in the primaries. Fascinating, fascinating. Um, do you have, given the increasing gun sales, whether or not caused by COVID, do you have any concerns about increased access to or gun ownership during a time like this where people are, you know, maybe despairing, maybe job losses, maybe social isolation, maybe trapped at home with kids and spouses? Yeah, I think that there's an important distinction, um, but the first answer is yes. I think it is reason for some concern. The um, possibility that a, a lot of these additional sales are going to um, people who already have a large gun collection and are just adding another four or five guns to the dozens they already own uh, is one image. And, and perhaps uh, it, that image does not convey such a great sense of, of concern. But to the extent that some of the sales are going to first time buyers uh, or to people who at least are buying their first handgun, uh, then it increases the base of people who, whose household is at risk. 
And it, it's at risk for uh, suicide in some cases. It, it's at risk for domestic violence, depending on the circumstances and, and intimate partner homicide. Uh, and of course, it, it's at, at risk to other kinds of accidents and, and gun misuse. So I, I think that unfortunately, we don't know from the available statistics, the extent to which the recent surge in gun sales has broadened the base of gun owners. Um, all we know is that there's uh, additional guns in the private hands, but we don't know whether that's increasing already large collections or, or spreading the base. Yeah. So as an empirically minded scholar, what data do you think we might be able to look back on from this time and um, use for research purposes or to answer open questions about, um, about firearm ownership or about um, accidents, suicides, domestic violence? What kind of data are you looking for once we get, once we could kind of get through this back to a normal time. Yeah, I certainly think that there is going to be a lot of interest in studying uh, the uh, correlates of additional gun sales uh, and and the the pandemic uh, in all its many facets. Um, but it's going to be hard to extract clear lessons. If you think of this as an experiment, it, it's a really messy experiment, is yeah. what it amounts to. And so that we have simultaneously an unprecedented lockdown on our social life. We have unprecedented job losses, unlike anything we've ever seen before, and, and the uh, terrible damage that the lockdown has done to the economy. Um, and we, we have not only a surge in gun sales that happens to be associated with it, but also apparently a surge in drinking, which is going to affect um, or, or plausibly affect a, a number of the outcomes that we might be interested in. So as I say, um, maybe, uh, it, it, and, and for sure, actually, it's an interesting bit of history but it's far from a controlled uh, experiment. And it's, it's going to be hard to say at the end of the day that this caused that. Yeah, so we'll get, we'll get a lot of data out of this, but it might be hard to draw conclusions about what factors are causing what outcomes when so many things that are unprecedented are happening, happening at the same time. They're, they're all happening at the same time. And, and uh, statistically, uh, it's a mess, but you know, for, for most people, that's the least of our worries. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I think we can all agree on that. Um, well, thanks for joining us here today. We really appreciate getting your perspective and hearing your thoughts on, on these important issues. Um, so thanks for being here. I enjoyed talking with you, uh, Jake. Take care. Thanks. All right. And thanks to all of you for joining us um, at home. Please follow along in the COVID and Gun series. You can find it online at the center's website at firearmslaw.duke.edu. Thanks.